Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hyperconscious Podcast. Alan, what is Hyperconscious? Once you understand why something is the way that it is, now you have the power to change it. Great conversations with great people and great questions are the keys to the kingdom of unlocking your consciousness. Every single action that you do starts as a thought. When you control the way you think, you will control the way you act, and you will control the way you live. That is hyper-conscious. No, no, no. Um, Geographically? Geographically? Geographically. Geographically. This is cool. So I would say make sure that pretty face is shown. Yes, true. They're going to want to see that thing. They're going to want to see that thing, Alan. That face. You good? Ready? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode where Alan and I were lucky enough to talk all about relationships with Mr. Spike Spencer. Today we are going to hit you with a small talks episode on the word gratitude. This was suggested by Peyton. Thank you, Peyton, for the suggestion. Yes, thank you for that suggestion. So first and foremost, as you know, this is coming. A friendly reminder to go to the hyperconsciouspodcast.com and click on join our mailing list. The only way only that your life gets better, better. is if you get better first. Let us help you do that by kicking kicking starting. Kicking starting. Kicking starting your Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays off right. Uh, join our mailing list. No, seriously though, thank you so much. We've gotten a lot of people joining the mailing list, getting good feedback on the morning minutes, and we appreciate you very much. We do. All right, read that definition of gratitude. I know we, like I said in the outro of the Spike episode, I know that we have done gratitude in different forms before. I think this is our second or third time doing it, but third, it's called practicing gratitude for a reason, and we want you, if you're listening, to figure out what's going on in your life right now that you're grateful for. Maybe it's different than what it was six months ago or what it was a year ago. I know for me it is. I know for Alan it is. So that's why we're doing this because it's called Practicing Gratitude. We are going to practice it. Also, one thing I want to say too real quick is repetition is everything. You know, a lot of times we need to be reminded of things more than we need to learn new things. And so gratitude is one of the fundamentals of having a happy, healthy, and productive life. And so if we're probably going to continue doing oh, episodes yeah, on gratitude sure. throughout the years. For sure. Okay, so f- here we go with the definition. Dictionary.com on my phone says, and I don't like when they use the word in the right. definition. Yeah, it's, it's Honestly, it bothers me. Yeah, because that makes no sense. Right. Okay, but anyways, here it is. It's a noun. The quality or feeling of being grateful or thankful. Again, they used grateful in the actual definition, but that's the only definition they had. Wow. So at least I didn't have to pick through like eight different ones. You want to hammer the clock on? We have to figure out, you know what, we have to figure out a way to get the clock on the television, but that's that's all right. And if you're just listening and you have no idea what I'm talking about, head over to our YouTube channel and you will see our pretty faces in our nice uh, hyperconscious backdrop. But gratitude. Okay, so I think that for a lot of people, and I was one of these people two years ago. I remember one time Alan and I were talking about gratitude and I was like, at one point, I didn't even know what gratitude was. I didn't have any gratitude practice. And if you're listening and you don't, like, don't feel bad. Everything starts off, you know, as either a small thing or nothing at all, right? So for me, understanding that there are certain things that are going to happen in your life both positive and negative. That is a guarantee. It doesn't matter what kind of life you're trying to live. It doesn't matter what job you work at. It doesn't matter what your family dynamic is. It doesn't matter what your health is. It doesn't matter what your fitness is, what your relationship, um, relationship being. What's the word I'm looking for? Status. Dynamic. Status. Status. No matter what, you are going to have ups and downs in your life, right? Number one, it's about controlling what you can control. And you're not going to be able to control the negative experiences. What you can control is the things that you have a positive association with, the things that you're grateful for, the people that you're grateful for. Um, Maybe you woke up today. That's something to be grateful for. Maybe you 
can look into your past. Like when it comes to gratitude, I think gratitude and perspective go hand in hand. I do too. Yeah. So for me, I did a sappy video on my Instagram story the other night, and I, I do these when I'm either really high mentally or really low mentally. And I was really high mentally. Everything had been going really well. <laughs> I so saw that. in those moments, it's important for me to gain perspective and realize everything's going really well right now. But also in the grand scheme of things, you know, I look back a year ago or six months ago and things were so much different. So it's very easy for me to grab onto that and say, I'm so, I'm so gracious. I have so much gratitude that we have so many listeners who reach out. Yeah. You know, like people that we can talk to on a daily basis that listen to this podcast and they say, I'm so grateful that you guys add so much value and I'm proud of you. Like I had a listener say that the other day that I'm, I'm proud of you and it's, it's crazy to see how far you've come. I can't believe that you were suicidal two years ago. It's like, I'm gra- I'm so, I have so much gratitude for the listeners. And I have gratitude now that we're deeper into this journey that my family supports me 100%. Yeah. 100%. Like, I don't, it's crazy, man. I know a lot of people don't have that. So if you're listening, what are you grateful for? Like, what, on the worst of days, On the worst of days when nothing feels like it's going right, what is one or two things or people or places or ideas or memories or feelings that you can focus on that really makes it okay, that that gives you perspective of, you know what, I don't have things as bad as I'm feeling in the moment? So I agree so much with everything Kevin just said, and I do think this too. If you're not, I think gratitude is an attitude, and it's something that needs to be practiced every day. Um in some shape or form. We had David Meltzer on the podcast. Is it Metzler or Meltzer? Meltzer. Meltzer. Uh, I apologize about that, David, if you're listening. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I hope that he will become a mentor of mine at some point. Um, He did say text or call me anytime, which I'm very excited about. Yes. But he said that he wakes up every morning and says two words. That'll be dropping Sunday, by the way. Yes. Oh, really? (laughs) That's right. That's right. So uh, 20-minute episode, David Meltzer. Unbelievable rep. He says that he wakes up every morning and says the words, thank you. And before bed, he also says the words, thank you. And he thinks of things that are specific. And he, I saw a speech where he basically said this. He said, all of the science that I've studied and the physics, the quantum physics, Newtonian physics, metaphysics that I've studied show that there is an actual biochemical shift in your body and your brain when you are practicing gratitude. And he said, how many people here want to be more grateful? And everyone's hand goes up. And he says, the sad thing is that 3% of you within a week will no longer be doing the thank you when you wake up and thank you before bed. It's a fundamental that I think Kevin and I keep going back to because no matter how your life is right now, whether it's better or worse than it has been in the past, technically if you're not grateful for what you do have and you're not focused there, it doesn't really matter how much better things get if you're not at least grateful for what is. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that... What was I... I was listening to Chris Cornell, um, Soundgarden. He was the lead singer of Soundgarden. He, he took his own life this year or last year, I believe. And I was thinking to myself, like, how does somebody as famous and successful and loved, right? loved end up getting so low that that they feel like that's their only way out. And I feel like, and by no means am I an expert on this, but you have to think that they never they never figured out the right mindset. And when they got to the point where they had everything that they ever wanted, they realized like, oh no, my, I, I still don't feel what I want to feel. And I think that you you have to, I think gratitude has to play a role in that somewhere. Because... Every night, not every night, but I do have a gratitude practice. When I go to bed, I journal and I write my wins for the day. I write the things that I'm grateful for and I write some positive affirmations. And the reason I do that is because even if life is going amazingly, I don't want to forget that I have a baseline of things that I should be grateful for. Yeah. Like there are certain things that you should be grateful for on your highest of days and your lowest of days. Because like you said, if if you don't have anything to be grateful for tomorrow or today, you could have everything tomorrow and it's like those things aren't going to matter as much. Yeah, That's just going to be extra stuff. And I think you have to have like, I don't know if it's people, I don't know if it's places, I don't know if it's things for you, I don't know if it's relationships, but like some days I'm just happy 
Remember in Florida when I couldn't breathe? Yep. Uh, dude, I'm I can I'm over that now. I can hit the punching bag as hard as I want, and I don't have trouble breathing. I can do a heavy leg day, and it's like, I it literally makes me emotional thinking about that because I'll never forget. And this, I'm gonna go behind the scenes. I'm gonna go behind the scenes, guys. I was in the bathroom of this Florida of this Florida hotel, and I had said to myself, I said, Universe, God, whatever it is, I promise you, if you make this go away, I will stop smoking weed. I promise you, I will not smoke weed anymore if this you goes away. You never told me that. Yeah. This is the first time I'm hearing that as well, listeners. Yeah. Wow. And wow. it didn't go away <laughs> right away. <laughs> yeah. And I won't lie. Like, I got home. I tried smoking again. I had wicked bad anxiety. I stopped. We went to Florida for 30 days. Like, this was a while later. Yep. I didn't smoke at all when I was down there, obviously. Yep. I got home. I tried it again. I got anxiety. And I said, you know what? I said I wasn't going to do this anymore, and I haven't done it since. So... You haven't done it since. No, I haven't done it since we wow. got home from stayed in integrity with himself. But but it's because I'm so I have so much fucking gratitude that I can breathe again. Right. It's like I am so grateful for that that it's like, you know what? You can have that. That's fine. Whatever. Yeah. And maybe maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe it didn't. I don't think it did. But either way, I don't know what that has to do with gratitude. I, I know that's a random story, but <laughs> because I'm able to go like I'll never forget those feelings in that hotel, man. Yeah. Like, guys, if you're listening, if you're watching this, I literally told Alan, like, I might have to just fly home and skip the entire Brendan Burchard conference. Can you imagine if you that would that? Have, that, in, that would have changed my life in such a negative way. It would have changed so many things. So that's something I'm grateful for. Something I'm grateful for is the, the fact that I went through that amount of pain and that amount of fear and that amount of uh, reserve. I had to push through that and, and chase my dreams. I'm so grateful now that I can look back on that and it's a positive experience and that's not something I'm dealing with. I think that my health, like for the first time in my life, I had to focus on being grateful for my health because I've always been healthy. Mm. I've always had, I've always been in shape. I've always been physically capable, more so than most people. And in that time, I wasn't. Like that sled challenge killed me almost. Yeah. And that's never happened to me before, man. So like for me, I'm grateful for my health. That's just something simple. I'm taking this whole episode over. Jesus. Dude, you're good. Epic this monologue. Is, I... I just so, want to make sure the listeners know, like, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be something big. It doesn't have to be something small. It has to be something that, like, moves you. Yeah. Like, the stuff that I'm grateful for, it literally makes me cry when I'm laying in bed at night, when I'm having, like, a shitty day. Like, that's, it's just, for me, it's all about perspective and, and staying grounded. Right now, if you're out there, you could focus on one of two things. You could focus on the things that you do have that you're grateful for, or you could focus on the things that you don't have and the things that aren't going well. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. If you only ever focused on what you were grateful for, you would not be as ambitious to go and attain the things that you want. I think desire is one road, and I think being grateful for what you already have is another. And I think it's the dance between those two you know, extremes where we live. And I think you need both. You need to be ambitious for more while being grateful for what you have. There's a great story that I wanted to bring to the table here, and I kind of prepped for this um, podcast here. I've got five different flashcards that I can already tell I'm not going to get through all of them. <laughs> if you look uh, over there, yeah, you're 20, 21 know. seconds. Five Emma. flashcards. Here we go. Here's what I'll say The people that went to the moon for the first time, um, imagine that. You go to the moon, you look at the earth, it's the most incredible sight. Your whole life, you dreamed of this as an astronaut. You get home, you shake the president's hand, there's a parade, and the whole world is like focused on you and your accomplishment and it was a sort of a group effort worst alarm ever right not a good alarm everyone hates that noise <laughs> oh yeah man <laughs> um and then what do you do after that because everything after that is going to feel somewhat mundane and so if you read the stories of the astronauts a lot of them got depressed and they fell into drugs and alcohol because how do you go up from there, right? Right, And so I guess the point that I want to make is that no matter how high you climb, no matter how many dreams you accomplish, it's the person you become that really matters and the people you love. And if you cannot find gratitude in a smile or in a beautiful sunset or in you know, making someone laugh, like the simple things, the, the everyday things, then the, the no amount of money, no, 
no amount of accolades will ever really make you happy. To me, it should be the accolades and the trophies and the, the millions of dollars and the, the goals and dreams. That's all gravy when your baseline of gratitude is just being able to breathe like Kevin just talked about. So one of the things that I'll say real quick here, health is everything. Without it, you have nothing. One of the other stories that I wanted to tell real quick, I was um, a senior in high school and I was basically fearfully ill. I don't want to say deathly ill, but I was fearfully ill for two full months. And I was out of school for over two months. And I didn't go to... You remember the senior um, thing, where the, the all-night mm. thing? Oh, yeah, the senior... Uh, What's God. it called? I'll think of it. I'll think of it. So this was safe grad, safe, safe grad. graduation. Yeah. So w- there's this event called safe graduation that everybody got really excited for, and I wasn't able to go because I was too um, sick. And at the tail end of senior year, you're supposed to be living it up and partying, and and everybody there was parties that I couldn't go to. All my friends went to. I felt like I was missing out on everything. And I remember saying to myself, similar to what Kevin said to himself, that all I wanted was a chance. Um. S- so. What do I mean by a chance? A chance to make a difference. I go back there frequently. Um, You've seen the Rock speech that I showed you where he said this. He said, basically, keeping the hard times in front of your mind so that you can go into these big moments with the right perspective and not take them for granted. And one of the things that I always go back to is that moment senior year when I, at one point, didn't know whether or not I was going to be able to be successful, be able to be healthy. And um, I guess one of the things that I say to myself all the time that I want to bring to the listeners is someone is in a hospital bed right now begging God for the opportunity that you have in this moment. And the opportunity that you have is to make a fucking difference. So whatever that difference is, hopefully it touches others' lives in a positive way. But I think that that is the ultimate form of gratitude is realizing that there are people out there right now that quite literally can't take action. And maybe you're sitting there making excuses for yourself. Maybe you're sitting there, you know, um, saying, I don't want to go to the gym. But you don't have to go. You get to go. And as soon as you live from that place where the perspective of, like, I get to do this, all of your excuses are going to wash away. I think that you said it a little bit earlier in that, but I think a lot of people have practices for when things are bad. Mm. It's like a lot of people are grateful for things when when shit hits the fan. If you're grateful for things all the time, right? Imagine how different things will be when it hits the fan. It won't. You won't have to reach for like, ah, shit. What am I actually grateful for? No, you'll know exactly what you're grateful for. And I think when it comes to gratitude, you're also going to get a really, really good grasp on what matters to you, right? Like when you start saying, what are the essentials? Yeah, I'm grateful for this. And then you imagine, well, what if I didn't have that? Well, I should probably put more time and energy into that relationship or you know my body I'm, I'm very grateful for my health well I'm not going to have my health if I don't keep doing the things that got me there right you know so I know we went off the rails a little bit but if you're listening if you're watching this imagine if you woke up tomorrow with only the things that you said you were grateful for today what would you have I've asked in in previous episodes but if you're growing if you're evolving then you're going to be grateful for different things. You're going to have gratitude for new experiences and new people and and new lessons. And I think it's important to keep that on the front of your mind because you will struggle, you will be hurt, you will cry, you will, you, you will. It's just part of life. But if you focus on the stuff that makes you happy, if you focus on the things that you're so happy to have in your life and you're grateful for, I think it's just going to make the journey not only a little bit easier because you'll have, you know, better things to focus on, but you'll be more whole and there'll be more love and, and all of that. Two all the good vibes. All the good vibes. Two super quick things I want to say. One, Kevin interviewed me. I forget which episode. I think it was oh, like yeah. 122 or something like that. Um, and one of the things that I said, we went very deep on that episode, was that the things that I regret most are when I took things for granted, whether that be my health or the people in my life, things like that. I will never forget the day that my dog... Um, Boo got hit by a car. And the reason why I say this is not to be morbid and, and not to necessarily hash up old pains, but because it's a reminder to be grateful for what I do have. And here's why. He came in my room when I was trying to be super productive. And if you know me, when I'm alone in my room, solitude is when I'm the most productive and I do not like distractions. So this is nothing against Boo, but he was trying to play and I kicked him out of my room. Now, I wasn't mean to him necessarily or anything like that, but 
I went for a run later that day, and to make a long story short, when I got home from my run, he was dead at the top of the driveway. Now, I will never forget that I wish I had spent time with him when he wanted to play, because I'll never get that opportunity again. And I guess if you're out there right now, don't take things for granted. And I would argue that human beings naturally do because there's something called the law of familiarity. Things that you have a lot you think will be there forever because that's just how the human condition works. But I guess that's why it's so important to develop some sort of practice. For me, I don't do it every day, but I try to every day. When I touch my, my chain, I always think of three things I'm most grateful for. Um, usually it's my health or my mom and sister or whoever. But and before bed, I try to do my wins uh, for the day and things that I'm grateful for as well. If you're out there right now, no matter how much more you get, cars, clothes, money, material things, what's going to matter most in those dark moments, like when my dog passed away, the first person I called was my girlfriend at the time, Jenny, my mom and sister. Like, Put yourself in a position when shit hits the fan and realize that those are the persons, places, and things that actually fucking matter. Because the other surface level shiny objects aren't going to fucking matter at the end of the day. And I don't want you to focus your life in an area of unessentials. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to know what you're grateful for. So if you're watching this on YouTube, comment below. Let us know what you're grateful for. Reach out, alazarus 88 on Instagram, never quit kid. We want to know what you're grateful for. And we have another episode up next for you. We're going to do a fitness episode, Scratching the Surface. Our goal in this is to give you some fundamental things that you can make changes with now. And when you leave this episode, you will know more about fitness than you did when you entered. No BS, no shortcuts. We want to give you the real cut down when it comes to fitness. Folks, fitness is one of the only arenas in this life that I feel like I have truly mastered. You will love this episode. Um, the reason why I say I've mastered it is because I can get that scale to say any number you want it to if you execute on the fundamentals. That said, do not miss this episode, and we will talk to you soon. Bye! Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for listening to another episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. Going hyperconscious will absolutely change your life because if you understand why something is the way it is, now you have the power to change it. If you going hyperconscious with us has changed your life in any way, please share this episode with one of your friends because the more people that go hyperconscious, the better this world's going to be for everybody. And if you would kindly leave us a five star review on iTunes, that would help us make more people hyperconscious and we would be greatly appreciative. Thank you. Bye.